This is the story of the piano that I'm sitting beside. A little Kanabi Grand Piano that uh, has made me who I am. The story goes back long before this piano though, back to Sulphur Spring, Texas. Back in 1946, John Boyd Sr., my father, got married to mom, Catherine. And one of the first things that dad bought was a piano, an old Brinkerhoff upright piano that had been through a flood. The sounding board wasn't that great. It didn't really hold a tune super well, but it worked, it worked. So when we lived in Madison in the second grade, I began piano lessons. It went pretty well. As soon as I learned something, I wanted to share what I knew with mom to teach her. So I guess that was a forerunner of who I would become. That went good for two years. And then we moved to Victoria where it didn't go so good. And I told mom I wanted to quit piano. And we were moving to Pendleton about then. And she said, well, take lessons till the end of the eighth grade. If you still want to quit, you can quit. Well, Ivan Botsford, my teacher, was able to get through to me. And by the seventh grade, I was having fun. In the summer between seventh and eighth grade, my buddy Steve and I started playing piano duets. And that was a whole lot of fun. By the eighth grade, I was a pretty decent pianist. I could play the piano for prayer meeting. I could play for church. I got so I could play the organ and easy music for church. And our piano tuner from Hermiston, Oregon, named Roscoe Hurley, told Dad that this boy, John, needs a better piano. Well, in the summer of 1961, after my eighth grade year, Mom and Dad and I drove down from Pendleton down to Portland, Oregon. And we got our Portland Oregonian and looked at Hughes Grands and went and looked at a couple. They were better than our Brinkerhoff. We also took a look at uh, Tallman's Pianos out on Sandy Boulevard to see what they had in the way of Hughes Grand Pianos. Well, the guy heard me play a little bit, the, the sales manager, and he said, come try this piano. And it was this piano here, a brand new cannot be grand piano, five foot two inch. And uh, dad says, we can't afford that. We can't afford a new piano. Because what we'd been looking at was around $1,000 in price. And uh, this one was valued brand new at over 2,500 which was a lot of money in 1961. But he said, well, I'll give you $800 for your old piano sight unseen, and it probably wasn't worth 100 So mom and dad went off in the corner to talk. Now, uh, it's not a side story. It's a very important part of the story. Dad had always, as a pastor, wanted to go on a trip to the Holy Lands with uh, HMS Richards on one of his tours to really see things and hear how things had been when Jesus was there. But he wouldn't go without mom. And so they talked and uh, he had never saved up enough money for them to go. So pretty soon they said, okay, we're gonna take the piano. And uh, Holy Land money became my piano money. Instead of practicing an hour a day, kind of, uh, I guess I will. I, with this piano, I practiced a couple hours a day and in the summertime even more. Because all I could do in the summer was mow lawns, play baseball, and practice the piano. So I probably played three or four hours a day on the piano. And uh, I guess uh, the piano, oh, I don't guess, the piano made my skills to the point where when I wanted to be a music major, and teach music like I wanted to teach my mother. Uh, 
I did it, and uh, I've been teaching since 1968, which is a long time, and it's all, all thanks to this piano here. So that's the story of my Tanabe Grand Piano. <laughs>